Hey Rebel EM followers, Salim Razai here, and in this video we're going to talk about modifying the Scarbosa criteria for left bundle branch blocks and paste rhythms. So let's start off with what the original Scarbosa criteria are, and there's really only three components to this. Two of them are concordant change, one of them is discordant change. For concordant change, it basically means that the ST segment is going in the same direction as the QRS. So if your QRS is going up, so is your ST segment. If your QRS segment is primarily going down, then your ST segment is also going down. All you need is greater than or equal to one millimeter of change in only one lead, and that is most likely going to be an occlusion myocardial infarction. The third component is discordant. ST elevation. So whatever direction your QRS is going, the ST segment is going in the opposite direction. And the original Scarbosa criteria said greater than or equal to five millimeters. The problem with this is that it has poor sensitivity. There's lots of false negative results. And so this has been actually removed from the guidelines as heart alert activation. So if we're getting rid of that third component, then what are we talking about? And that is replacing that third component with this modified version, which is looking at the ST to S ratio. So it's the ratio of the ST segment elevation measured at the J point, and I will have some examples of this following this, compared to the R or S wave, whichever is the most prominent. So it's basically looking at the amplitude of that ST segment elevation at the J point and comparing it to the amplitude of the QRS. And if that amplitude is greater than 25%, there's a high likelihood that you are dealing with an occlusion myocardial infarction. So the evidence for this, um, there's more than just these, but these are the three primary papers. So the original version or paper of this that was published was back in 2012. The follow-up validation study for left bundle branch block was published in 2015. I was actually one of the authors on that paper. And then finally in 2021, we also looked at this modified Scarbosa criteria applied to paste rhythms. And here's basically the takeaway from those three studies is that the sensitivity of the modified Scarbosa criteria is significantly greater than the original Scarbosa criteria but with a very similar specificity. So it's just a better rule to be applied. So here's a case of a patient who came in with chest pain and shortness of breath. And this was the EKG that they presented with. And the key here is, is that the first thing I do when using the modified Scarbosa criteria is I'm looking for that great, greater than or equal to one millimeter of ST elevation um, or depression in a concordant manner. And actually on this EKG, if you take a look at lead three and you look at lead AVF, you can see that there is concordant change in the same direction as the QRS, um, greater than one millimeter. And if you look at AVL, there's actually ST elevation um, that is concordant with the QRS that is greater than one millimeter. And so this ended up being a true left bundle branch block with an inferior occlusion myocardial infarction. So here's another patient that presents with chest pain and shortness of breath. And I looked for concordant change on this EKG and just couldn't find it. So then the question is, is, is there a discordant change and does the modified Scarbosa criteria point to this being an activation for heart alert? Well, the red line represents our J point. The black line that I just drew in is our baseline. So the line at the bottom is the amplitude of our QRS, and the line at the top is the amount of elevation at the J point for that ST segment. And if you actually count the little boxes, there are 28 of them for the amplitude of the QRS, and there are five of them for the elevation in the ST at the J point. And if you divide those two, you get a negative 0.18 which is less than 25% of the amplitude of the QRS. So this ended up being a false positive anterior occlusion myocardial infarction, ended up being a CHF exacerbation. Here's another example. Another patient presenting with chest pain and shortness of breath. 
Again, I don't see any concordant change in any of the leads. But if I look at the leads that have the biggest amplitude, again, the red line is our J point. The black line is our baseline. The black line on the bottom is the amplitude of our QRS. And the black line on the top is the amount of elevation at the J point of our ST segment. And if we count the number of little boxes, we get negative 21 for the amplitude of our QRS, and we get six for the amount of elevation at the J point. If you actually divide this, this is negative 0.29, which is 29%. It is greater than 25%. This ended up being a paced rhythm and ended up being an infralateral um, occlusion myocardial infarction. So there you go. Scarbosa criteria for left bundle branch block and paced rhythms, not something that we should be using anymore. Um, this has been out for some time. As I showed the evidence at the beginning, the original study was back in 2012 and the validation was 2015. Yet I still hear people talking about the modified Scarbosa or the, the actual Scarbosa criteria. What we should be doing is replacing that third component with this amplitude um, version of the ST to S ratio. And hopefully going through a couple of those EKGs shows you how to do that. And so what we're looking at is the ratio of our QRS to the ratio of our ST elevation at the J point. And if we're less than 25%, it is highly unlikely to be an occlusion myocardial infarction. If we are greater than 25%, then it is highly likely to be an occlusion myocardial infarction. So there you go, modifying the Scarbosa criteria. Would love to hear your thoughts, comments, and questions. Thank you as always for tuning in and until next time.